Hello, ma'am. Hello, everyone. This is our Kritika, 20 VC 1326. And I am here to talk about our team's project topic, which is um, Stack Overflow Tag Prediction. So I'll be presenting first. So this is our topic, which, uh, which is to predict tags for uh, questions in Stack Overflow. Uh, I'll be going from the basic. So firstly, what is Stack Overflow? It is a website that is used by a lot of people to find answers for the technical questions. Uh, this website finds around like 100 million people who visit uh, every month to ask the questions, learn, answer and to share technical knowledge. So uh, browsing through such huge amount of data uh, will be quite a challenging task uh, when it comes to uh, finding questions that are similar to the ones that uh, the user asks. So now let us see what tags are. It is a piece of information that can be used to describe the data or the content that it is being assigned to. They can be used to um, categorize uh, the data into different subcategories. So um, basically uh, what we propose is that uh, we have to assign different tags to questions to improve the performance. Uh, I'll tell how. Uh, uh, first, uh, let me share a few examples. So first one is how can we do in order traversal of binary tree using Python? So for this question, it can come under different tags such as Python, list, binary tree, and in order traversal. And the other question is how to run a Flutter app in VS Code without Android Studio. So this question can come under tags like Flutter, VS Code, and Android Studio and also virtual machine, machines if possible. So how is this helpful? Like I mentioned before, it will be helpful with uh, search optimization. So how exactly does it, uh, is it helpful? So basically, let us consider a question, uh, uh, the one that we took on took in the example over here. How can we do in order travel server for binary tree using Python? It has a lot of tags like Python, list, binary tree, and in order travel server. So uh, if we search for this, the questions that uh, are all the other questions that come under these tags can also be suggested to the user so that uh, they'll be able to find answers easily. Since Stack Overflow mainly focuses on technical questions, uh, people in the field of computer science, like programmers and everyone, will be the ones that get mostly benefited through this project. So NLP, NLP, uh, we will be using NLP for uh, this project uh, for the implementation. So it is a branch of computer science which is concerned with making computers to be able to understand spoken words and text in a way a human does. So yeah, so basically uh, the text that I am speaking right now, the uh, the listener, uh, if they are a human, they'll be able to understand easily. But it is not the same when it comes to computers. Uh, they have the tech, the data has to be arranged in a different way for them to understand. So uh, NLP will help uh, pre-process the data such that the computers will be able to understand it. There are a lot of concepts under NLP. So uh, the uh, ones that uh, we are using in this project will be uh, discussed right now. Bag of words representation. So one of the biggest problems when it comes to text that it is uh, messy and unstructured. Like I mentioned before, uh, let us consider a document of, of um, any data, uh, I mean, textual data. So it it can have punctuation, it can have commas, it can have different symbols, it can have all sort of thing, all sort of such things. And so it is very messy and unstructured and a computer will not be able to understand it or any an ML algorithm in this case. So uh, they prefer well-defined fixed length inputs 
So by using this technique, we can convert all the inputs and all the sentences which are of different lengths into a fixed length vector. So I'll be explaining this through an example. So first, uh, let me take, uh, uh, let us consider a document, a text document. It has a lot of paragraphs and a lot of sentences. So basically all of the words present in the document will be tokenized. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, basically all of the words will be tokenized and N popular words will be taken. So uh, usually it will be taken as a, taken in a percentage, this, this percentage of popular data among the whole were, were words available. But in this case, as an example, I will be taking N as four, which is four most popular words. So let us consider they are uh, hello, you, well, and R. So all of these popular data are put in a dictionary and they'll be assigned a value. So in this case, hello is assigned zero, you is assigned one, well is assigned two, and R is assigned three. So now uh, let us take a sentence from the document, which is hello, hope you are doing well. So uh, its corresponding vector could be uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, which is, it, it is corresponding to the sentence that we have taken. So when we iterate over the words that are present in the sentence, which is tokens that are present in the sentence, we'll see that, uh, uh, yeah. So basically in this method, we'll be iterating through the sentence and then we'll be uh, checking if it is present in the dictionary, the initial dictionary over here, the popular words dictionary. And if it is present, we'll assign it as one, the position as one. And if it is not present, we will assign it's, uh, we will not assign anything. It will just stay zero. So yeah, so let us uh, iterate through this sentence. Hello, hope you're doing well. Hello, uh, when you take hello uh, and check in the dictionary, it is present in the dictionary. So yeah, uh, and it is assigned a value of zero. So the zeroth position in this vector will be turned into one. So yeah, and uh, the next loop, hope will be taken. Let us check if it is present in the dictionary. And no, it's not present in the dictionary. So we will not be doing anything to the vector and move on with the next iteration. Next word is you. And let's check if you is there in the dictionary. Yes, it's there in the dictionary. So, uh, and it is assigned a value one. So uh, the uh, value of the position or the index one in the vector will be turned into one. Similarly, uh, all the other iterations will be going on. Uh, if we check R, uh, R is present in the dictionary and is assigned a value three. So the third index is changed to one and doing is not present in the dictionary. So nothing is changed and well is present in the dictionary. So the second a second index will be changed to one. After performing all these iterations, we get a vector one, 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 zero, and zero. And this will be the uh, bag of words representation for the uh, sentence that we have taken. Yeah. Now uh, let us move on with the next. I'm sorry, yeah. Let us move on with the uh, next method which is the TF-IDF method. So uh, TF-IDF method basically has uh, can be broken down into two parts. So the first one is TF and the second one is IDF. TF, which is the term frequency, is basically the frequency of a particular term in the, when uh, related to the whole document. So uh, it can have different formula. So first one is raw count. So raw count is basically just the uh, count or the number of times the term occurs in the whole document. 
and the second formula can be raw count by total number of words. So, um, uh, which is the uh, total uh, number of times the term occurs in the whole document divided by the total number of words in the document. And we can also uh, take it in a logarithmic logarithmically scaled way, which is log of one plus R E, I mean, raw count. So uh, we will be taking the log of uh, uh, one plus the raw count, which is the number of times the term occurs in the document. And uh, now let's move on with IDF, which is inverse document frequency. So uh, basically, um, uh, what it tells is that it tells the it tells how uncommon or how common a word is in a document. So uh, it has a formula that we have which is IDF of P, which is equal to log of one plus n divided by one plus df of t plus one. The t over here represents the term which we are checking the commonness for, and n is the number of documents. So uh, uh, as uh, as we can see over here, the denominator in the log of one plus n divided by uh, one plus df of t is added with one. And we can see that it's because uh, df of t can also become zero since the particular term that we are searching for can also not be present in the whole document. So in order to uh, avoid divide by zero error, we are adding one to the denominator. It extends the bag of words framework by taking into account total frequencies of words in the text. It helps to penalize too frequent words to, and, and provide better feature space. So yeah, the first sentence I have already discussed before. And what this sentence means is that uh, if we combine TF and IDF, so basically we'll be taking the multiplication of the values of TF and IDF uh uh to get the final value and uh idf helps with uh, removing two frequent values which is uh, like for example we take as was is the all of these uh words are commonly occurring words but we can see that they are not important they are not keywords that we require in order to you know um uh, uh achieve our search optimization. So we have to remove those words. They are not required. So uh, this algorithm is uh, perfect for that. It'll help us with uh, removing such two frequent words so that we can have a better feature space. So the main uh, motivation behind uh, or the intuition behind the TF IDF method is that the more important the term is, the less frequent it is in the document, meaning the importance of the term is inversely proportional to the frequency of the uh, uh, frequency of the word in the document. So where TF will uh, give the will give how often the term occurs in the uh, document, and IDF will uh, talk about how uh, talk about the relative rarity of the word when compared to the document. So uh, when uh, so yeah, as I mentioned before, when you multiply both the values, we get the final result. If the final result is uh, high, we, then we can say that that particular word uh, will be very important in the document. And uh, to be more specific, it will be a keyword. And uh, closer to it, closer it is to the zero, or uh, if it is zero itself then we can say that the word is not important uh, or uh, so or it is the other word like I mentioned, it could be the as is was and all that. So basically, uh, we will be using this for um, to provide better features, better feature space and uh, to get uh, uh, and for keyword extraction. So yeah, the, the last uh, syntax that I have given here over here, it is the scikit representative uh, scikit function to calculate the TF IDF uh, value. Also, uh, it is TF IDF vectorizer 
So the 0 0.9 over here uh, tells us that 90% uh, the words that occur more than 90% of the time will be taken out of the whole document. So yeah, now multi-label classifier. So this is a model that we are going to use uh, in our project. So uh, it, uh, uh, it can be used to assign more than one label for an instance. So uh, uh, as we have seen over here, we have taken the data, we have used uh, NLP, which is natural language processing, in order to pre-process the data. So bag of words representation and TF, IDF are uh, used, uh, are the pre-processing steps. So they are two different ones. And then we will be uh, getting two different uh, pre-processed data from both the more, bro I mean, both the, uh, you know, uh, frameworks. So, yeah. And then uh, these two data will be fed into the multi-label classifier. So my uh, multi-label classifier, what it does is that it will assign more than one label for an instance. It should not be confused with multi-class classification. So in multi-class classification, uh, a, a set of instances will be given a set of outputs possible outputs will be given and one instance can have only one output. So the best example for this would be uh, reviews. So when a review can be categorized either as bad or good or average, it cannot come under all three or any of, uh, or like in both bad and good or in both average and bad. Or, no, it can't come in two categories. It can only come under one category. So that is multi-class classification. But in case of multi-label classifier, uh, it can come under more than uh, one label, which means uh, let us take a, take the example of a questions itself. So it can come under uh, different tags, right? So yeah, we'll be using multi-label multi classifier for the purpose. And then the data set uh, which we are using is the 10% of Stack Overflow questions data set. It is given by Stack Overflow itself. It is present in Kaggle. And it, uh, it, it, uh, what it contains is the question ID and all that, along with the questions, its answers, and the uh, possible tags that question could come under. So uh, yeah, this data will be pre-processed using bag of words representation, TF-IDF, and then both the data will be fed into multi-level classifier. And finally, we will be getting uh, two different outputs, right? So all uh, both of them will be uh, evaluated. So a lot of evaluation metrics, such as the accuracy, uh, the area under ROC, ROC curve, the precision recall values, all of these will be uh, these are just examples. All of these will be taken and then uh, they will be compared to get the best model which can uh, uh, um, which can give us the best possible or uh, the uh, output with the highest accuracy. So uh, uh, so yeah, the tags will be assigned to all the questions. Yeah, that's all about our project. Thank you.